Watch you guys use this trick to install Windows 10 or Windows 11. We're going to be installing Windows 11 here. So head over to the Microsoft website and select your version of ISO that you want to download. I'm going to be doing the multi edition version here. Hit the download now button. And what we can do is we can now choose what a product language we want. So I'm going to go ahead and choose English at United States. You can choose English International if you're in the UK. But we're going to go for the United States version here just because most of my audience is from the United States. Click on confirm and this will then allow you to download the ISO file. You can create a bootable USB flash drive as well later on if you wish. Uh, but basically what we're going to do is download this and I'm going to skip the, the creating of a bootable USB flash drive because I've done that multiple times and you can check out some of my old previous videos. So let's go ahead and hit the download button and download this ISO. And we can then move on to installing, and I'll show you the trick that you can use to uh, sort of debloat it really during the installation process. Now, this trick for debloating Windows or third party apps during the installation process has been around since 2022 when Daniel uh, put this post up on control.blog. So, what you need to do is during the installation process here, you can choose your uh, install language here, but it's important that you choose. Uh, the uh, world one here. So English and world in brackets here. Once you do this, you can change it once we get to the desktop. But this is important because once you do this, it's going to basically uh, remove all of the bloatware such as Candy Crush, Netflix, Spotify, and other uh, based regional uh, settings inside Windows during the installation process. So now we've got that done, we can click on install and it will go through the general install uh, process here and I'll show you exactly what happens once the installation has been completed. Now what it's going to be basically doing here is removing all of the third party apps and bloat on here which is really useful uh, to speed up the process. So you can see here we're going to go through the Windows 11 Pro. I'm going to choose this one here and click next and choose the accept their terms conditions and click next. Now you can choose to create a partition if you wish. I'm just going to install it on this one here. That's fine and let it go ahead and install Windows. And this should work for Windows 10 and Windows 11. And I don't think this will be patched because obviously it's part of Windows and I'm not sure they can patch it. So what we'll do is we'll let this go ahead and install and we'll move on to the next step. Now again, once this is all done, it's advisable to go into group policy if you have Windows 11 or Windows 10 Pro and go in there and make settings changes in there to stop Microsoft forcing all of their changes on you. It's worth having the professional edition of Windows because it's going to allow you to make uh, group policy edit changes in the group policy to stop them from actually making changes when you roll out an update. Uh, this is really important. Otherwise, you're just going to keep having to uh, pause or block Windows updates. So there we go. We're getting to this stage now, and you should see an error code coming up here, or not so much an error, but you should see the out of box of experience uh, region error here, which will be in red. And it's because it doesn't know what region you're in because we set it to weld. Now it's searching for a region and it won't find one. So you'll get something went wrong. O O B E region uh, error here. And basically we can skip this now and uh, move on with the installation. And this is just basically going to remove all of the uh, bloat from the actual PC. So let's go ahead and click on skip here and move on to the next step and you just go through the same motions here. So I'm going to go ahead and select uh, English for my keyboard layout. Now you will need to change this once we get to the desktop uh, to your uh, country of your choice because the region is set to world and it won't be correct. So let's go yes and then we can skip the second keyboard layout here and then move on to the next step which will be checking for updates and then it will go ahead and it will start to uh, build your profile and then basically install Windows and finish off. Now, next, we're going to go for the next step, which is basically asking you to sign into an account uh, to continue with the installation. And you can easily bypass this, it's quite straightforward. But you see here, sign in, and a lot of people don't want to sign in. They're even forcing Windows uh, 11 and Windows 10 Pro users. So, once you get to this stage here, there's a few things you can do. I'm just going to put no at thankyou.com and set this like this. And uh, they can't block this. And then, once this is done, you can click on next and it will ask you for a password. Just put any old password in here. It doesn't really matter. 
because it's going to give you an error code saying, oops, something went wrong, and that's okay. We can now click on next and continue with a local account, which is what most people want. Now, if you do want to have a Microsoft account, then obviously don't put those details in and use your own details to log into your Microsoft account. Give yourself a username here, uh, give yourself a password, and click on the next button. I'm going to turn all of this stuff off here uh, because I don't want to uh, engage with Microsoft in that way. So I'm just going to turn this off, like adver advertising IDs and all that sort of stuff. Just turn all that stuff off, and that's now done. And then you should now go for the next phase, which is finishing off the installation process of Windows. Let's go ahead and get to the end screen here. And there we have it. You can see a debloated version of Windows install here uh, just by making that one setting. Now, of course, we need to change our settings back, but you can see a lot of the stuff has been removed from the installation, which is really nice, which means you get a quite nice, clean uh, install. There's still a few little applications which you can physically uninstall yourself, or you can use one of those scripts if you want to remove some of this stuff if you want to. I'll show you both ways of doing it anyway. So you'll get an idea of what you can do if you're one of these people that like to have a really nice clean install. Now you'll probably see that the Microsoft Store doesn't work and that's because it's region based and we've got the wrong region. So we need to change that back to the original region, uh, which is for your country. So let's go ahead. Now, if you don't want the Microsoft Store, by all means, you can remove that as well. I made videos showing you how to do that. And if you want to remove it, you can do. I'm going to leave it on the system because there is some use for it. Go into time and language here, and we need to change our region. You can see the region is set to world, and you need to put this into the country of your choice. And again, I can change all of the keyboard layout to English if I want to at a later date. I'm just going to leave this as is for now for this tutorial, so you can see how it basically works. With the region now changed to England, and uh, you will change it to whatever country you're living in, we can now go back, and you can restart the PC, and it doesn't really matter. It will still uh, have the correct uh, settings here. Nothing's going to get downloaded and installed. Now, really, if you want to block it completely, you'd go into group policy at this stage and make changes in there to stop all of this stuff coming back down from Microsoft. That's what I'd advise you to do. And uh, I'm going to go ahead now. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to quickly uninstall some of these apps. And you can do this basically by going to the App Center and uninstalling these. Now you can manually uninstall these apps inside the installed app section inside your settings here if you want to and do them one by one or you can use a script or a batch file or something like that to remove some of this stuff. There's plenty of them out there. I've shown you loads in the past. Very easy to do, but you can manually uninstall these. Now some programs you're not going to be able to uninstall on here which are installed by Microsoft, but there is ways around it which allow you to force to uninstall uh, these applications. Now, you can also use nice registry files like these to do some tweaks if you're into that sort of thing and click on these and it will basically make a load of settings changes inside your privacy area. Save you going through there and doing them all one by one, which takes a hell of a lot of time. This basically does it uh, really quickly. Now, the privacy and security area is one of the key areas which I go to to remove all of this stuff because it's all running in the background and it takes up a lot of system resources. So you can use uh, programs or scripts or even registry hacks like these to basically turn a lot of this stuff off quickly with one click like this and basically click OK and that's now all set. I can also remove any leftover apps by using this as well or using a script if I wish, depending on which way you want to go about doing things. You can even change your power settings and a bunch of other stuff inside here. Once you've done all this, you just need to restart PC. And uh, once it's done, you can see it's doing some updates and you'll see already some changes to the operating system by just running those registry hacks there. And you should see it looks a lot cleaner now. Now you can make some changes here and even change the menu and the right click context menu if you wish. And you can even go as far as uninstalling Edge if you wanted to and things like that. But you can use scripts to do that as well. There are plenty of them out there to choose from. But you can see a lot of these settings now have all been turned off with one simple click of a registry file and we don't have to go in here manually and do all this ourselves which does save a lot of time now you can create your own custom isos and i've shown you how to do that as well which will have all this already done for you uh, but again most people don't want to use those and you could just do this once you get to the desktop it's super quick and easy and i've sort of drawn this out a little bit but if you want to be quick and easy about it just get straight to the desktop after you've installed it the way i showed you run a couple of files like this and it'll be done. And you can just get on with using your computer with very little bloat on it. 
and it won't be that bad. Now, if you want to go even further, you can do by using other tools like Chris Titus Text Tool or other tools out there, which will actually debloat the system a little bit more if you want to. Some people choose not to go down that route because obviously it will make major changes to the system. But if you're one of these people that like doing this sort of stuff, then you can use these very quick and easy. Chris has spent a lot of time building this tool uh, to make it easier for you to install applications and also to turn off a lot of telemetry and privacy concerns that a lot of people have on their system. And if you're running an old system, uh, pretty much this will remove a lot of the resources that Windows does take up. Again, it will reduce them by quite a fair bit. Let me show you quickly what it is here so you can see. Uh, inside here, you can then go in here and you can install applications. So let's go ahead and we'll quickly install, say, Google Chrome here so you can see it. I'm only going to do one for quickness, but basically check mark what stuff you want to install and then click on install and it will go ahead and install these for us. Let me go ahead and quickly click on this one here. And once you click on it, what will happen is the command prompt box will open up and basically it will go off and download it and install it onto the system. This is using, you can see here, the correct uh, location, which is from uh, Google themselves. It's going to come straight from their sources. It's not going to come from any third party vendor. So don't worry about that. It is all safe and uh, you can use this method to install all your applications. That's now done. And you can see we do have Google on our system here. Going on to the tweak section, you can go through here and run uh, oh no, shut up. This is like shut up 10 or shut up 11. They've got both the same thing. It will reduce a lot of the telemetry. And I think this is what Chris is implemented into is now because it's a lot easier and it's easy reversible rather than using a lot of code and stuff like that to do a lot of tweaks like the D bloke scripts that you used to see back in the day. But this tool makes it a lot easier. Oh no, uh, shut up 10 is a pretty good program and you can download it uh, manually yourself off the internet and use that if you don't want to use Chris's tool. You can do that also. So if you're on an old computer and you really want to sort of uh, lighten up the load on the PC, you can use these sort of tools to do that for you. On a new PC, I'll be honest with you, I haven't really seen, uh, I see people talking about boosts in FPS by 200 and 300 and all this sort of stuff. It's all a load of nonsense. It's clickbait. You're not going to get any of that by using tools like this. Basically, it's just lightening up the load on the operating system by removing a lot of the system resources that Windows takes up. And uh, that's basically what it does. So we're going to go ahead and we'll run this and I'll show you exactly what it actually does. We can remove also uh, some other features on here that you might not want. So let's go ahead and run the tweaks. Again, once you run this, you will see a box popping up on the screen. You can undo these tweaks as well. But again, always make a system restore point and always back up your data before running any sort of programs like these on your PC. OK. If you look at the task manager here, I'll quickly show you here so you can actually see the processes here. There's like 127. That's already probably been reduced a bit by the script, but that will go down to a fair bit, like 60 or 70 or something along those lines and reduce it. And it'll also take the load off of the memory as well, which you can use as well. So let's go ahead and we'll run this and we'll restart the PC and we'll take a quick look at what this actually does. Now, there's other things you can do as well if you really want to keep going. You can really sort of lighten the load on Windows by continuing to do a lot of other tweaks if you're into that sort of thing. But what we're going to do now is I'm going to quickly restart the PC and get back to the desktop and you can then see the end result. Now, while that's restarting, I'll give you some transparency. I don't really run a lot of scripts on my system to debloat the system to an absolute minimum. I really sort of just turn off a lot of background settings and basically uh, do a bunch of other group policy tweaks. And that's about it, really. I don't go that crazy anymore because obviously it, it just it all ends up becoming a little bit too much. And uh, sometimes it breaks the system. So I try not to do too much uh, tweaking on the computer. But as you can see here, uh, you can see it's been reduced down to 74 processes. Again, we've got um, memory being reduced here as well. So it's making it a lot lighter. And this is on a virtual machine. Again, this is a clean install. There is no other stuff installed on here. As soon as you start putting applications like Adobe and other things like that, RGB software and all that sort of stuff, those processes will start to climb again up to quite a high number because that's just the way Windows works. But you can come into the config section on Chris's tool again and install uh, .NET Framework stuff and all that sort of uh, jazz if you're into that. 
And again, there's some other things like update tweaks as well, if you want to make tweaks to those uh, by pausing updates. Now, I myself do actually pause Windows updates and only run them every five to six weeks. I always check with Microsoft to make sure there's no issues with updates before they run. I'm not one of these people that will run my main system with the latest update straight away because sometimes it always breaks things. And uh, you know what Microsoft are like. They release updates without checking them. And before you know it, you've got a problem with your computer and you don't know what it is. And it's generally a Windows update that they rolled out. Anyway, with that said, I hope this video has been some sort of use to you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I really do appreciate it. I shall catch you on the Discord server or I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.